Ciao amici, welcome to Pizza Chat. This is episode three. I'm Mastro Leo Spitzeri with Tammy Bailey, who's the business development manager for Pizza University. Tammy, good morning. How are you today? Good morning, Leo. I'm doing great today. How awesome. are you? I'm great. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here on this episode and that you guys decided to feature me. How amazing is that? Well, why wouldn't we feature you? You're here teaching an amazing class on pan pizza this week with the Pizza University. How's the class going? That's right. We had an amazing group. I've got students from all over the country. Actually, we have a couple from out of state um, and out of the country, believe it or not. One student is here from Mexico, and then we have a couple that are spread out from uh, outside those borders as well. So it's been amazing to teach four styles of pizza in three days and uh, really with an immersion in pan pizzas and talking about you know the history, how it dated back to Italy. So there's so much amazing things that have happened in three days and uh, it, it's really cool to see that natural progression of the student. They come in on day one looking so like intimidated <laughs> and then by the time they get their hands dirty and in the flour and moving around, they just, uh, just kind of change and they, that relaxed vibe is really, I, th I, I think this is like my classes. They're very mm -hmm. chill, very interactive. People move around a lot. I don't like people sitting in chairs. Yeah. So uh, it, it's been a, it's been an amazing experience. Well, Leo, you are a wealth of knowledge in all types of pizza, different styles from different regions. What can you tell me about Neapolitan pizza? Maybe a little bit about the history and where we are today in America with our Neapolitan and Neapolitan styles. So, you know, the thing about Neapolitan pizza is this, right? In Italy, it's recognized as, as a, one of the principal styles because we say pizza started in Napoli. But when we say that, it goes back like 300 years, right? right. Even before, like, so what we have documented is this information in a time when there was no refrigeration, no electricity. So the basics being the basics. And to me, that's what I fell in love with this whole time was how this style of pizza was created without all of these master pizzaioli <laughs> and all of these professional bakers. It was really people that had inconsistent ingredients, things like flour changed by region because they were all milled and sourced locally. It wasn't like we were getting grain from Canada to mill flour in Italy. So this is one of those things that I fell in love with and it's the art of actually mixing that dough, the art of the pizzaiolo, not so much the pizza. And this is what, you know, um, uh, you know UNESCO, um, they, they actually documented as part of our heritage, right? And in Napoli, it was something that was so amazing to see celebrated because it was the pizzaiolo that finally was mm -hmm. getting the honor and not so much the pizza mm -hmm. or like in France, you know, they, they certified the baguette. So for us, it was really a special moment. Now, as we continue to evolve, right? Mm -hmm. The thing about Neapolitan pizza is that there, there's really this, this movement of not tinkering with it, right? We don't want to see too much innovation. We want to keep things as traditional as they were 300 years ago. Right. So even though we're now in this day and age where we have refrigeration and all these other things, it's really important for us to continue to focus on those ways of the past and continue to move them forward because the art and the skill is in understanding the day, what it's like, the climate, is it raining out, is it hot out, and how to adjust that dough and manipulate it. So this is again the, the reason for me that if you're going to learn how to make pizza, the Neapolitan pizza is the important focus on being that first one to learn. Because after we see the evolution of how mm -hmm. everything spread out through the rest of Italy, it always kind of goes back to that base of bread that has toppings like sauce and cheese and all these mm -hmm. other things, but that simplicity of ingredients being part of the total build, a condiment and not the star. Because if we make our pizza correctly, we've got a base of bread, we've got this tomato sauce and mozzarella and anything else, and it should come together in unison that not one is overpowering another, and all together when you eat it, it makes this perfect bite. I know that you mentioned you were training that you went to in Italy. Congratulations, you are VPN certified. Um, that is very exciting. Can you tell me a little bit about, for those who don't know what VPN is, what maybe some of their uh, qualifications are that you need to meet in order to become certified, and a little bit about your experience in Italy? Sure. So, you know, I've been, um, I've been going back and forth to Napoli for, man, a very long time. 
my family's from Calabria, Italy, and to say that I spend more time in Napoli than I do in Calabria, <laughs> maybe I'm gonna upset some of my family back in Calabria, but it really is the truth. I fell in love with Neapolitan pizza very early on, and then when you go into Napoli and you feel the culture and the vibe of the people, like Napoli has this rhythm, mm -hmm. right? And it's really like, you can't even describe it until you're there. People talk about going to like New York and hitting Times Square for the first time, right? And Times Square in New York and Manhattan, they have that vibe. Napoli is the same way and I fell in love with that so early on. So for me, once I started recognizing that there was this thing called the AVPN, Associazione Verace Pizza Napolitana. And what they do is they started around 1984, right? right. They're about to celebrate their 40th anniversary. Mm -hmm. So to think that for 40 uh -huh. years, there was a group of people that were like-minded, all looking in the same direction to say, let's look and respect the traditional Neapolitan pizza the way it began, right. right? And then all of a sudden, now to say that the AVPN will actually certify equipment that can be mm. used to make their pizza wow. or an ingredient that will be used that came from the right area in Napoli or Campania or Italy, right, mm -hmm. to make this pizza properly. And I think it's those controls and those guidelines, there's something called the disciplinaria, right? Okay. And this is kind of like the Bible of the AVPN. Wow. Every piece of the pizza is described in this manual from how to make the dough. The dough recipe is literally published it's not a secret, right, right? right? How to process that dough, how to make it, how to hold it. Every parameter of the dough is listed out. Then we get to the baking of the pizza, the oven temperatures, the size of the ovens, the dimension from the floor to the top of the dome. All of these things, again, are really important because this pizza needs to bake in under 90 seconds, right? Wow. Because after 90 seconds, the pizza changes. It becomes drier, it becomes crispier. Right. So all of these parameters are really important so that there is a level of um, uh, consistency throughout the world. And it doesn't matter if you're in Italy, if you're in Japan, if you're in the United States, it's always the same. So the AVPN has a very important role in protecting this pizza. Mm -hmm. And I became um, I became an, amb an ambassador um, to the Midwest. There's, a, there's a, a, a number of us in the United States that are promoting why the Neapolitan pizza is so special, right? right. And for a guy like me, it's very easy because I love this style of pizza. Right. Even though I started out as a guy making Chicago stuffed pizza <laughs> and the whole deep dish nonsense and all this, like that's where my roots came from. Yeah. But really when I go back to Italy, where my, my parents, my grandparents, mm -hmm. everybody's from, I'm first generation Italian American here. I learned Italian before I learned English. So again, for the United States to say that now we have pizza makers, we have pizzerias mm -hmm. that are so into this pizza to say that we want to be certified where the association comes out or a guy like me comes out and says, I'm gonna give you proper training mm -hmm. to make this pizza the right way. I'm gonna give you all the tools that you need that once you're, well, once you're on your own, mm -hmm. you can make that dough, the dough sits ambient, we never refrigerate it, right? right? You can stretch the dough properly in Napoli in this style of pizza, Napolitana pizza. We use this method called the slap method mm -hmm. or a schiaffo, right? And even the way that we slap this dough, is very important to the outcome of the base of the pizza. Mm -hmm. So again, we have it a very important role, but I think that the movement has changed over the years because it seemed like in the 90s, Neapolitan pizza in the United States started getting like a bad rap, right? Not that it was a bad thing, but for the American market, mm -hmm. it's a pizza that's softer, right? It's not a crispy pizza. Mm -hmm. It's a pizza that sometimes compared to American styles of pizza, seems scantily topped, right. right? Like it doesn't have enough ingredients. But I think that as now this whole movement in America and around the world has gone to more of an artisan product, mm -hmm. something that's not so commercial, I think that that's why people are coming back and saying, well, you know what? There's a lot of skill into knowing what the temperature of the day is and forecasting what that dough is gonna look like in 24 hours. 
because that's truly the life of our dough. If you went to a pizza or a pizzeria in Napoli, right, mm -hmm. that dough, you would maybe start using it at 11 a.m. when you start, let's say, pranzo, your lunchtime. Mm -hmm. But then if you're the pizzaiolo that's working through the dinner shift, mm -hmm. that pizzeria could be open till 10, 11 p.m., maybe midnight, depending where you're at. So all of a sudden, that same exact dough has to be just as good for that pizzaiolo working at night where that dough <laughs> might have 18 to 20 hours on it right. as it was at 11 a.m. where that pizzaiolo maybe has a little bit easier job because the dough is at its perfect point. The dough balls are still nice and round. Mm -hmm. By the time we get to those pizzas at night and we look at the dough ba uh, balls <laughs> inside the box, sometimes they look like squares because they're so proofed up, they're touching each other, they raise up, and it takes some skill to learn how to manage a dough that um, maybe to some people would seem sloppy, right? Right. And this is where the art of the pizzaiolo comes in. So to me, yes, the AVPN has a very important role, not only in Italy, not only in Europe, but here in the United States as well. We have delegations in Los Angeles where mm -hmm. the headquarters for the AVPN USA, or I should say AVPN North America, okay. um, sits. Um, and then uh, also with Mexico, so it's Americas. Right. Yeah, right, and then there's a delegation in Atlanta, right? Um, that we have a, a beautiful uh, facility there as well. And then you know, there's always these talks as I travel around doing consulting that people say, you know what, Leo, you talk so passionately about Neapolitan pizza. Um, I would like to explore this as an option for my first pizzeria, mm -hmm. and I love that because that gives us a signal that people are starting to look in our direction and we've inspired people to say this is a really beautiful pizza that we make and we understand the art that goes behind it. Absolutely. I, I noticed when you talked about the trend uh, specifically to the pizza makers, what about the fact that it's trending um, amongst consumers? Do you think that's forced upon them because of the reintroduction of the Neapolitan pizza into the market by the pizza makers? Or do you think that they're really just embracing the product finally? You know, I'm one of those person or one of those people that's constantly, I, I, I'm a very positive thinking person. Mm -hmm. People who know me or if you've ever been in my classes or uh, you've you know ever been around me, um, know that I'm very chill, I'm laid back. What you see is what you get. We're talking about pizza at the end of the day. I mean, how terrible could, how, how could, how terrible could my job be, right? And I think that when we look at um, 2019 going into 2020, right? We had, you know, the, the shutdown of the world. We had the, the, the pandemic happen, right? It was a very dark time. But I remember like sitting with my grandmother, who's now gone, mm -hmm. but I remember sitting with my grandmother and she was recollecting like times, like when she was small, a little girl, talking about like when they had the time of the Spanish flu, okay. right? And the world kind of did this same kind of shutdown. Yes, it was a different time, but it was like this dark time when we yeah. sat at home, right? And I think that the inspiration of now people having to sit at home, mm. number one, having to actually sit and talk to their family, <laughs> right? Right. That they're all locked in together, their kids, <laughs> the wives, the husbands, everyone's together. But I think that time that they had on their hands to now go and explore things that they didn't have time for in their day-to-day -day life. Absolutely. Like yeah. we saw more sourdough bakers in the world than <laughs> ever before, right? We had so many people baking at home that, you know, a lot of the, the big um, retail flour suppliers that you would see in the grocery stores had shortages of flour, wow. shortages of yeast, right? So that was like an amazing time, in my opinion, because inspired people to try things that they hadn't tried before. We're in a time now where there's more home bakers getting their first backyard pizza oven, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Or a tabletop oven. There's so many different types of ovens that are out there. Things like mixer companies, like, you know, like you have dough mixers. Right. These mixer companies, right? Mm -hmm. Having now equipment that mimics the, uh, like the professional things that we use, like spiral mixers that work in your house, being able to plug into the outlet regular, that you plug in your regular yeah. blender with. <laughs> so all of a sudden, to see that people are interested or passionate enough about pizza, mm -hmm. that they're going out to try to buy the same things that the pros are using. And that's why to me, it's like, you know, if this was able to happen in this, you know, 12, 18 month period, whatever the, the, the whole pandemic thing went with, 
right? That means that guys like me, and there's so many people that do what I do as far as educators or uh, mentors or whatever you want to title me as, right? But I really think that it goes back to this, that people work in these day-to-day -day jobs, right? Yes. Maybe they're working a job that they don't love. Right. And all of a sudden, it's like, if I can light just this little spark under you to say, hey, man, you got hands. You can stretch, though. You can see that you love doing this. How cool would it be instead of going into a, a cubicle every day of your life <laughs> to be a bean counter or whatever you want to right. call yourself, right. right? All of a sudden they say, I'm doing something with my hands. I'm doing something that I love. I wake up in the morning excited to go to work. And that really is the same thing that happens with me. Like I wake up in the morning saying, man, I could be digging ditches for a living. I make pizza for a living. How awesome is my life, yes. right? And I think that it's that little spark that sometimes say, I'm gonna go, you know, I'm a consumer at home and maybe I'm a weekend warrior or whatever you wanna call me that makes pizzas on the weekend or bakes bread on the weekend. And all of a sudden it's like, could I potentially do this for a living, right? Pizza is having its renaissance right now. It really is. And, and that inspirational part from people like us or you know the work that we're doing uh, with Pizza University, for example, inspiring people that are outside of our industry to take a look behind the curtain mm -hmm. and really see what's here, what's involved, and that, yes, you could do this. All you need is the courage Absolutely. to make that first jump. And that's right? one of the things that I really like about our instruction at Pete's University, you can be a professional chef, you can be a home cook, you can be someone whose passion was just ignited through, through the pandemic, through research, through experience. It's wonderful that you can come into a class and feel comfortable no matter what your skill level is. You know, and in that same comment, it's a really a testament to what we're doing because the people showing up for our courses, and it doesn't matter if it's me or another instructor, the people that are showing up for our courses are not all professionals. Right. So obviously we're getting the message out. People are saying, hey, you know what? This might be an option for me. And if you have a career, maybe you lost your job or whatever it might be, this might be that perfect time for you to say, well, let me at least take one class. Right. Let me spend a couple days with a pro that knows how to do all these different things. Let me do some homework and ask all these questions, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you see these people by that third day, that intimidation of day one is gone. Oh. I, I start my classes, man, I'm really fast. Not that I'm fast, but I, I have a lot of strength in my messages, yeah. right? And when people sit in those classes, sometimes I feel like I'm slicking their hair back because I'm throwing <laughs> so much information at them. But all of a sudden, by the end of day one, they look at each other and they're like, man, I don't know what I just wasted my money on because there's no way I can do this. And I tell everybody, you know what? Tonight, chill out. Go back to your hotel or go back home. Go through the notes that you took today. Reread them. There's gonna be questions. There's gonna be things that you wrote that you don't quite understand what you wrote. And tomorrow morning in class, we're gonna start day two and we're gonna sit and we're gonna do a recap and we're gonna bank Q and A questions back and forth, and I'm gonna answer everybody's questions. And all of a sudden, that morning, it's like that, that first sleep, right? Mm -hmm. On day two, they come in and they say, man, you just literally connected all of these dots. It's a different person by day two. Yes. By day three, all of a sudden, when I take a step back and I tell them, look, set up the oven, get the prep table ready, we need to make tomato sauce, we need to get the dough ready, all of a sudden you see people moving around on their own, mm -hmm. right? And this is where all of a sudden that buzz, that vibe, that, that pride comes from that, wow, look at this. I started out two days ago not knowing anything or feeling like I made a mistake to now being able to start day three mm -hmm. and now I'm doing this on my own or we're not gonna be able to teach you everything in three days. No. But if I give you the tools to go home and play around on your own and try different flowers and say, I'm gonna go to the grocery store and this is all that's available. And I remember Leo saying to do this mm -hmm. and I'm gonna mix a dough by hand or I'm gonna mix it with a mixer or whatever it is, all of a sudden there's that first look on their own that, you know what? I think that this might be the thing for me. And that's what I love about this whole thing. It doesn't matter if you're a professional or you're an amateur, 
at home, we're all the same, right? Absolutely. And I think that that's what's so cool about what we do. Leo, thank you so much for all of this amazing information. I know you're going to be joining us back at PT University right. in July for another class. If anyone wanted to attend your class or any of the other upcoming classes, how would they reach out to do that? So the easiest way is um, go to the website, uh, pizzauniversity.org. Um, you can check them out. Instagram is the, at the Pizza University. You can go and send me direct messages. You can check out all my pizza content and recipes and all that under Ask Chef Leo across social media. Um, but there's so many cool things happening. Yes. So I would say go to the website, check out the courses. If you have a question or anything's going on, call Mariana, <laughs> call you, and uh, let's get everybody here as soon as they can. Absolutely. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It was so wonderful. Thank you. Thanks.